All right, this is a good one. Dear Neve, I'm in an online relationship with the greatest guy ever. And we have officially been dating for the last two years, for about three years now online. For 10 years, one problem. We haven't met yet. Short of photos and phone conversations, I have not actually seen her or talked to her in person. We've tried to meet almost a dozen times. I need the help of someone who's been through this experience before, and that's you. We didn't get much sleep last night. And why was that? Let's start the interview now, shall we? Let's okay. talk about that. Uh, so you, you, you're, you're catching us at a, at a very interesting moment. Mm -hmm. um, there was a huge news story that broke uh, yesterday. yesterday, or la we were last night, it was around well, for us kind of night. midnight that it broke here um, about a football player, a uh, college football player in the United States who, well, are you eating my cookie? Why are you eating my cookie? Put that back. We got more coming. Well, then you'll have one when they come. Um, and uh, so, so this football player had uh, previously, uh, last year in September, had led uh, his team, who was an underdog, to uh, to basically the top of the the league. Right. Um, and this was in the wake of the the kind of tragic loss of both his grandmother and his girlfriend who died within 24 hours of each other. Um, his girlfriend had uh, previously, before that, um, gotten to a car accident after which point she discovered she had leukemia and they had this very kind of publicly uh, documented uh, love affair in which uh, he would call the hospital and stay up uh, on the phone talking to her every night and um, he would send her flowers and she would say, don't come visit me, stay, play, you know, focus on your... Play for me. Play, yeah, play, play for me. Okay. So... Anyway, it was a really heartwarming story. Of and sort it of, took America, yeah. kind of, it took America and the, and the sporting, the, what's the sporting... Yeah, uh, the athletic world. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, not to mention that the football player is one of the sort of best in, in college and likely to be a first round draft pick. Anyway, it was just a, a big story. Yeah. Worthy of a film almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like, you know, like a home, you know, uh, uh, homegrown American boy, like, leads, leads the underdog mm -hmm. to victory against the, the favored, against the favorite team. Um, and, yeah, it was, a, it was a celebrated story. But then yesterday... Yesterday, uh, an article appeared uh, online. Yeah. It looked as though in the profile, the Twitter profile, and possibly the entire personality of this girlfriend who had passed was, in fact, fake, had been created. Yes. And in a press conference given by the director of the uh, athletic department at Notre Dame College, which is a major yeah. university, um, he specifically referenced Catfish, both the film and the show, mm -hmm. as an example for this type of relationship or online relationship hoax. Yeah. And more than that, the article that, was, that, was, that broke yesterday uh, revealed that at, at a certain point, um, one of the real women whose pictures had apparently been used in association with this hoax had reached out to me via Twitter asking for my help in uncovering and getting to the bottom of the story and in fact when I looked into my email last night I discovered that she also emailed me and basically Catfish is now a, a national is, is sort of a, on the tip of the tongue in America of everybody because um, America has been catfished. Oh my God. So that's why you had so many retweets because I looked at your oh Twitter thing and it's like 6,000 retweets. Yeah. Okay, that's huge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and the story is really still uh, developing. Yeah. And more, more information keeps sort of coming out and, and people suspect yeah. that the football player himself may have been in on it and created uh, the story with a friend of his who kind of masterminded the Facebook page and the Twitter profiles. So uh, we don't know what the truth is yet, but it, it seems that together um, they catfished America in order to, to bolster this story uh, and, and lead this football team to greater glory. If you're not already familiar with it, with both the documentary called Catfish, the MTV show, which is a derivative of that document, documentary, and the sort of associated things you'll find online and otherwise about catfish or catfishing. It is a scam, probably revealing my television watching habits, but was covered by Dr. Phil extensively recently, um, 
that follows the exact arc of this. Um, and it's perpetrated with shocking uh, frequency for me, shocking as an older guy who's not, not as versed in the online world, but, and it is, it is just as this one, an initial casual engagement, a developing relationship online, a subsequent trauma, traffic accident, illness, and then a death. Um, and, you know, as hard as it is for me to, to get my arms around this, there's apparently some sport in doing this. So it's happening all the time, isn't it, basically? Yeah. What do you think unites all the people that you uncover? Is, have they all been bullied? Have they all got self-esteem issues? Is there one thing that you notice in all the people that do it? I would say that everyone, and, and I think that this is something that probably everyone in the world has in common, but everyone is somewhat unhappy with their life situation, and whether it's because they're lonely, mm. uh, because they work too much, and they don't have enough time to meet someone else, or whether they're, be, they're insecure because they don't like the way they look, or they don't like their job, or they've been mistreated by their parents and haven't gotten the support. What, whatever problems that they all have, the internet seems to fill that void. Yeah. And they spend a lot of time online, and when they meet someone online, uh, they, they tend to project their fantasies and, onto this person and, and make this person kind of a cure-all for them. And they put a lot of hopes and dreams on this relationship and, and are very optimistic and kind of want it to be the, the relationship that will cure them and, and make them feel better and make them feel whole. Um, and I think that's something we all do with relationships anyway, but when you do it online, there's a lot more room for, uh, for deception, Mask. embellishment, masking, yeah, and hopeful thinking. Rebuilt is really something once in a lifetime. It's an unconditional love. I don't know what I would do without him. I love her. You know, I love Abby. I just hope he is. I always say Yeah, I could add to that a little, but just saying, I. One thing that I, as I think about it now, feel like is a theme amongst the catfish on the show is sort of what borders on an addiction. The idea that they may or may not have intended to create this online profile and more than that, probably didn't in many cases set out to deceive and ensnare people and carry on these relationships for as long as they do. But there's something very exciting and um, alluring about the attention and the fun of participating in these sort of things. And we, we hear it a lot, like, I never thought it would turn into this, but I got carried away. Uh, I kind of got sucked in and caught up in it. Right. Um, and that's something we see a lot of. Well, in terms of the consistencies among the deceivers or the catfish, um, there's some outliers, but the general thing that they have in common is that they are unhappy with some aspect of themselves. And really, for the first time in history, you know, before, if you were unhappy with yourself, you distract yourself by reading books or playing video games or going to movies or puzzles or, puzzles or, or, or sports or, or, sports yeah, or right, anything. Right. Sports. But now with the internet, you can actually go online and create the person you wish you were or the person you want to be. And, the world. and not only can you create that person, but you can have other people talk to that person and relate to that person and fall in love with that person. And it's very easy to then convince yourself that they're actually falling in love with you because you're the person that invented this profile. It's your personality. So in a lot of ways, it's better than a video game. It's better than any of these other distractions. And so that's, you can see how, how you can become addicted that's to that. Allure. What's that term? Art imitates life. Imitates life. Yeah. You know, people, people really believe that their profiles that they create are, are an extension of themselves. And, uh, and in many ways, it is art. It is, it is creative um, expression.
they're not wrong. A lot of the catfish say, look, it was me the whole time. It just wasn't my picture. Yeah. And like it, I glossed over some of these other details. And they're not wrong. I mean, it was their personality. But, you know, try telling that to someone who's fallen in love with the picture. Exactly. Now, as filmmakers, obviously, you're looking at making it as dramatic, suspenseful, entertaining as possible. But obviously, you've got conscience as well. How, how do you kind of ride that balance well of not hurting people as much as possible, but getting the best show? Oh, my God! <laughs> what's up? Are you okay? No, not I at don't... all. I just don't understand what's going on. During production, um, you know, it's our job to basically investigate everything and try to mine as much truth out of the entire story. We film everything. And, you know, scenes that end up being a minute long in the show that you watch actually took place over uh, hours and hours. For example, the, the, the research session that we do, which always seems like this fun, you know, a uh, couple minute long thing actually is like seven to nine grueling, tedious hours, at which point we want to kill each other. Um, and, and also when we meet the catfish, uh, we generally sit down with them for five hours or so and have a long conversation with them to try to understand why they did it. And then the show that gets shortened to, to a couple minutes also. So during the filming of it, we try to find out as much as possible and gather as much information. But during the editing and the post-production, and this is true for any media, any kind of storytelling, you want to shape it into a story that an audience can understand and digest. And you do try to create the best story possible. And that, you know, unfortunately means leaving some things out, shortening some other things, and, and streamlining everything to, to basically represent the truth. But you can't, ever, you can't ever tell the truth exactly like it is. I think what, what I've heard from a lot of people and what, and what I believe the success of Catfish the film had a lot to do with was that we took a very complicated story uh, which could easily have been made out to be one-sided and told it in, in as fair a way as possible. We, we really didn't judge Angela, didn't judge me. We just tried to represent as honestly as possible what happened and let the view, the discussion of, you know, how you felt someone did or what they did was this or that. That's what we found the film did effectively and why people enjoyed watching it and, and sharing it. And I, I, the goal for the show was to do the same thing. Uh, we don't know what we're going to find, but we're going to capture it as objectively, objectively as we can. And then more importantly, in the telling of it via editing, try and just be as fair as possible uh, and give people a chance to explain themselves and let, let their actions speak for themselves uh, and let them explain themselves. And I think we did that as well as we could. And do you think most episodes there's a positive that's come out of all the situations, whether it be the relief of being honest about it or a bullying initiative or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the goal, at least for me on the show, is just that. Uh, to, to give both of these people an opportunity at the end of all this to walk away and feel as though not only did they confront their fear um, of telling the truth or of traveling outside of their hometown for the first time or admitting that they were homosexual, whatever it might be, uh, giving them an opportunity to come clean and, and yeah, walk away having learned something and hopefully be being a bit of a better person for it. Well, I've got to let you go now, but it's out 21st of January in the UK. And best At of 10 luck. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. On MTV. Watch it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, 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 guys. Hello?